I have some great news. God has commanded you to take a day off. He's commanded you to rest from your work. Is that cool? It's in the word of God. And I'm going to show you this beautiful, maybe hidden, and plain sight, hidden in plain sight, this commandment that God has provided for us as human beings that would probably eradicate all of the anxiety and depression that we are seeing in the land. And I want to just share some of this with you. This is something that, you know, it, it has existed from the beginning of time. Let's dive right in and let's talk about this beautiful privilege that we have as the children of God to participate in a blessing <laughs> into a lifestyle that God has commanded for us, his people. So I'm going to ask you a very controversial question. Should we obey the fourth commandment? I'm going to give you a Sabbath myth, myth buster today. So let's talk about the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt know the gods before me. Thou shalt make not a, a, not a graven image. We're honoring our father and mother. We should not kill, commit adultery, steal, lie against our neighbor, or covet. Now, you would not ask me to break any of those commandments, would you? But if I said that Friday night to Saturday was uh, my Sabbath, and you asked me to help you out or work or help you move or something like that, that was work, you would feel no problem doing that in this culture. But it is a commandment of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you some of the cool things and some of the benefits of obeying the Sabbath as God commanded. So first of all, when was this commandment established? Was it established with Moses when he went up on the mountain? Nope, it was not. It was established as the first instruction to all things that were created. And that includes you and me. All right. So Genesis two, verse one and three says, so the heavens and the earth were completed along with their entire array. God completed on the seventh day, his work that he had made. And he ceased and the word Sabbath literally means translated in the Hebrew ceased and he ceased he shabbat he shavuot or shavuot on the seventh day from all his work that he, that he hath made and look at this in verse three then god blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it he sanctified he set it apart for on it he ceased from all the work that god created for the purpose of preparing so god gave you a day off god takes a day off every week Yes, he does. And I'll prove it to you. And God has a schedule. He, he keeps his appointments. And this is an appointed day. And this Sabbath has absolutely nothing to do with church, y'all. It doesn't have anything to do with church or going to church. The word Sabbath means to cease. And it actually means to rest, to cease from work. So let's talk about it. Okay. Let's go back to... Um, Genesis chapter two or Genesis chapter one, I'm sorry. God called the light day and he called the darkness, he called night. So there was evening and there was morning one day. So the evening is the beginning of the day in the biblical calendar. So the Sabbath was established on the seventh day at creation. It is older than any ceremony. It's older than any religion. And it is the very first instruction. It was not just for the Jews. And I'm going to prove it to you. God knew that humanity, because we were created in his image, needed a day off. Not only is this a day off to cease from our labor, but it's a particular day because it's he wants you to take the day off the same day he does. You ever had a busty or a best friend or maybe with your spouse? Listen, my spouse does not like me to work on the days that he's off. These are the days that we spend together because he loves me and he wants to spend time with me. The same way it is with your God who loves you. He wants to spend that day with you, okay? So this was established by Yahweh 
at creation for all creation. In Judaism, I want to tell you that all the days are numbered. Your days are numbered. You know that scripture, your days are numbered. Yes, Monday is day, uh, I'm sorry, Sunday is day one. Monday is day two. You see that Saturday is day six and day seven, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Friday is the sixth day. And at the end of Friday, at, at the evening time, it is day seven, which begins Shabbat. Only the seventh day has a name. So in Hebraic, if I can explain this a little better, the days are one through six, but the seventh day has a name. It's set apart. It's totally different. It's set apart and holy. And that day is named Shabbat or Sabbath, which we would translate in English. So seven symbolizes the divine. Also, it symbolizes creation and completion. It is the number seven stands for the completed work of God. In Exodus 20, verse 11, we see that God reiterates to the Jewish people this command. In Exodus 20, Moses tells the Jewish people, for in six days, Adonai made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that's in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Thus, Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat, the seventh day, and made it holy. Literally holy just has a short explanation. It means set apart. So that seventh day is set apart from all the other days. Yahweh, listen, I wanted to just tell you, there's a really cool story if you want to go back, that the children of Israel, we know that when they went into the wilderness and they were hungry, the Lord provided manna for them. He led them um, fire by night and a, cl a cloud by day. He provided everything for them, but he commanded them on the sixth day to collect two days worth of manna because on the seventh day, God rested. He was not providing for them. He was not giving them manna on that seventh day. And he commanded them. Some people tried to go out and collect on that seventh day and nope, nothing fell down from heaven. It was a dry land. Uh, you better have collected for your six. And there's a way to prepare for Shabbat so that you don't have to work on Shabbat. So um, we'll talk about that later as we go into this series. I'm going to have more than one, uh, more than one episode here. So the fourth commandment was established at creation, reiterated to Moses. So let's just talk about the Old Testament law. Some people say, well, I don't have to abide by that because that's in the Old Testament. That's under the law. Well, do you keep thou shall not kill, thou shall not lie, thou shall not steal? Do you keep those? <laughs> or do you think that's under the old commandments and under the old law? Let me tell you what the, uh, the proper translation for law is, okay? It was improperly translated uh, as the translators translated the Bible and they just used the word law, but it's really the word Torah. And the word Torah is properly defined in English as teaching and instructions. So if you go back through, for instance, I just challenge you, if you want to learn more about this, go back through Psalms 119, where, you know, it says, Lord, I apply the law to my heart that I might not sin against you. Look at that again. Look at that whole chapter. Go back and read Psalms 119, which is one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. And you go back and say, Lord, I love your teachings and instructions so that I won't sin against you. You see, these are not laws that are to bind us or to make us have an unhappy life or never have any fun. These are teaching and instruction. This is the teaching, the manual of being a human being and having a human experience as a spiritual being on this earth. This is the manual of teaching and instruction. It's in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. Okay. And this is it, Jesus, Yeshua said, I did not come to abolish the teaching and instruction, but I came to fulfill the teaching and instruction. That gives you a whole new perspective on what the teaching and instruction, instruction or the Torah is. So let's talk about this fourth commandment. It made God's top 10 list. So he reiterated again to the children of Israel, wrote it on the tablet for Moses as a commandment. It is the longest commandment. It has blessing and cursing, it has a blessing for obeying and a curse for disobeying. It is the only commandment that I see that Christians blatantly break and do not honor and don't have 
see a thing about it. Now I'm not saying all Christians. I'm saying that the majority of Christians in the United States, but there are very clear instructions. So let's go to the word of God. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of God for it. So Exodus 28, this is uh, verse eight. This is Moses. Remember Yom Shabbat, which is the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work. Look how plain this is. But the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai, your God. It is a, it's a cease. Okay. Shabbat means cease in it. You shall do, you shall not do any work, not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your male servants, not your female servants. So not the people who work for you doing all the work for you. Everybody's going to rest, even your cattle, not even the outsider. Like if you have company, they're not going to work either. Everybody's going to rest. Okay. Now, why do people <laughs> buck up against God saying, I want you to rest. I want you to take 24 hours from Friday night to Saturday night. He's very clear about what day, the seventh day, Friday night to Saturday night, and take time to not only be with me, not to go to church, but basically to rest and just be with your family. Exodus 23, 12, you are to do your work for six days, but on the seventh day, you will rest so that your ox and your donkey may have rest. And also the son of your handmaid and the outsider might be refreshed. Let everybody have a rest. Let's have a refreshing. You know, I know um, I love the scripture that there'll be times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy at his right hand, their pleasures forevermore. And if you think about if God has an appointment. We're going to talk about this a little bit too. He has appointed this day to be with you. Now, if I have an appointment at the dentist and that appointment is at noon tomorrow, I might not show up for the appointment, but my dentist is going to be ready for me and expecting me. And listen, there will be a charge or a little curse put on me if I don't show up and they'll charge me anyway, right? God has an appointment with us every single week every single week on that seventh day where he wants to hang out with us, to spend time with us, to rest and chill with us. And uh, in his presence, there's refreshing. Okay. Now so let's make it a little plain and look at the penalty, which this is under the old covenant. We don't keep this penalty anymore, but this was how serious God was or how serious God was telling Moses to be with the children of Israel. Work is to be done for six days. This is Exodus 31, 15. But on the seventh day is a Shabbat of complete rest, which means it's holy, holy to Adonai, which it says right there. Whoever does any work on the Shabbat will surely be put to death. Now we know the wages of sin is death. We believe that, right? Um, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Yeshua, Hamashiach, our Lord. Okay. Now the wages of sin is death, but the wages of not keeping Shabbat is you might come to an earlier death. You might work yourself to death, or you may just have anxiety. You might have like a death in your spirit of depression, anxiety. You feel like you're always on that treadmill, the rat race, right? And the beautiful concept of Shabbat that the Jews uh, keep, that they you know work very hard six days and they prepare. Part of their work is to prepare for day seven, that set apart day the holy day of Shabbat. And we'll, we'll talk more about that in another, in the next episode, the blessing of Shabbat. So why do we resist the commandment to rest? Well, you know, the American way is to have a Starbucks in your hand and to walk around going, I'm busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, right? I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. That is like our badge of honor that we are, we, are, we got it going on. But that is not God's way. That is God, not God's best for us. He said that he, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he has come to give us life and that more abundant. And one of the abundant ways that we can trust him to do all our work in six days as we submit it to him. And on the seventh, we will be able to cease. That word Shavat is a verb. Uh, Shabbat or Shavat is to mean rest. It means to cease and desist. Now, when Christ said on the cross, it is finished, he pronounced the word Shavat in Aramaic, that means to cease. When we cease on the Sabbath or Shabbat, it is a day when we say this for the day or my work week, 
it is finished. I'm locking up the work. I'm setting it aside. And this is a day where I say it is finished. And I'm going to rest in the resurrection power and life of Christ and what God has given me. It's a day of ceasing. It's a day that we are supposed to cease from creative acts. Um, as God created the earth, we cease from being creative. It's really hard for me not to write, not to work <laughs> and do creative things that I like to do. Um, but now if there's something that's relaxing, like knitting, I guess, if somebody's, uh, um, or I even sometimes work out that a relaxing workout, not like the hardcore one that I, but something I love to do. It's to spend time with your family and the family of God, which doesn't necessarily mean go to church. Um, but listen, Sunday is for church. Okay. In our American culture, we've established Sunday. Why is Sunday the day we celebrate and we call Sabbath miss, we miss, uh, we miss call it us Sunday as our Sabbath. Well, let me tell you, the Catholic church changed the times and the seasons about 300, 370 AD. They changed the Sunday um, to because that was the day they worshiped their sun god, their idols were worshiped on Sunday. So when the Catholic Church took over the church at large, they changed the calendar from a lunar calendar, what the Jews um, honored, or God's calendar, to a solar calendar because of sun worship. So they changed Sunday to the esteemed day or the first day. But God operates on his calendar that he established at creation as a Moedim. Now, Moedim is a word that means the appointed times. God has made appointments on the calendar. He's made feasts, festivals, fasts, six fasts and seven feasts. And he's made times on the calendar where we are supposed to meet with him and worship him and celebrate different things, right? The day of Pentecost was the day where we celebrated the fall harvest or the barley harvest. That's exactly what Pentecost means, that 50 days, right, between Passover and, and, uh, and the Feast of Pentecost. So there are no mention of, of going to church in the Jewish Sabbath, even though they do go to synagogue. Um, but Friday evening at sundown, um, Jews, their beautiful tradition is they have a dinner. It's all prepared before sundown. The table is set. It's ready to go. That table stays set for 24 hours and the food is prepared. Maybe it's something you do in a crock pot or something ahead of time. And there's a beautiful dinner where the, I will, I'll get more into it, but it's basically a dinner where you celebrate family, where the husband lays hands on the children and the wife and says a prophetic blessing over them. They light candles and invite the presence of the Lord to come in for the whole week. And at the end of Shabbat, you blow out the candle to signify that Shabbat is over. It is a day marked at time. It is a day of sanctuary. It is a day where it is a sanctuary of time where you celebrate that 1,000 year millennial reign because there's going to be 6,000 years and then 1,000 years of peace. We are practicing that day, those 1,000 years of peace every single week where we celebrate on Saturday, the marriage supper of the lamb. There are so much rich tradition in celebrating Shabbat that we have missed. Do we have to do it? That's up to you. Do we get to do it? It is such a beautiful way to change your life and change your lifestyle. Let's talk about um, the commanded blessing of the Shabbat or the Sabbath. Genesis 2, 3 said, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, Kadash. For on it, he ceased from all his work that God created for the purpose of preparing. The Sabbath is a day to prepare, to enjoy the blessing of God. Barak means a blessing. It appoints a good fate, goodness, success, fulfillment, and happiness. That's what you're supposed to, that's going to be the spirit of the day. The Sabbath is set apart by God at creation. Again, Kadash to sanctify, to set apart, to make it holy. It is not like other days. Okay. It is the opposite of holy. We've talked about holy means set apart is ordinary, profane or normal unholy. So if we treat Friday night to Saturday night as an ordinary day, that would be profanity because God has set 
apart at time to meet with us, a sanctuary in time, a temple in time, a holy time. God created to commune with all his creation. Even the animals got to rest, y'all, as they enjoy him and all that he has created for us. So one of the great things about Shabbat is getting outdoors, enjoying nature. Uh, you know, in the summer, it's easy, but in the winter, it's a little bit more, you know, go out and do something fun. Go for a hike. Uh, just go outside and enjoy one another and practice peace. Because once you practice peace, it becomes a lifestyle. When we are going on the grind every day, it is hard to know what peace really is. So let's talk about God's schedule, his appointments. Leviticus 23, one and two says this. Um, Then Adonai spoke to Moses saying, speak to Benai Yisrael and tell them these are the appointed Moedim of Adonai. Remember the appointed appointment, the set apart day, which you are to proclaim to be a holy convocation, my Moedim, my appointed time, my schedule. It's established and it's inflexible. Now, uh, he goes on to say, you are to make a proclamation on the same day that there's to be a holy convocation, and you should do no regular work. This is, a, listen to this, this part. This is a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation. Now we want to all say that we're grafted in the vine and we have the blessing of Abraham, but there are stipulations to keep the commandments that Abraham, yes, Abraham kept the Shabbat. We know that, right? So um, we know that in Matthew 12, so verse eight, for the son of man is the Lord of Shabbat. That's what God, the Lord himself said. He didn't abide by all of the things that the man-made traditions that the Pharisees and said Sadducees made up, but he did abide by the word of God that said that we will cease from our labor. Do you really think that Yeshua, the son of God, would violate the fourth commandment that God commanded all of creation to cease from their labor? They are ceasing from their labor in heaven and on earth as it is in heaven was what Yeshua was all about. Also in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, it says, be imitators of me, just as I also am an imitator of Christ. That's what Paul said. So we know that Yeshua celebrated Shabbat and that we should imitate him. Okay, let's talk about practice makes perfect. I'm going to really kind of wind it up here. Practice makes perfect. The reward of Sabbath is shalom. And I'm going to tell you the word shalom is over 200 times in the Bible. This is my favorite word. This is my favorite word. Now, hallelujah is a really favorite word of mine, but shalom is special. It can be a greeting um, where you can use it as hello or goodbye. So maybe that's something you might want to start. Shalom. Shalom to you, because this is what it means. It means not only peace, but many people know that it means peace, but it also means harmony. It means wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. And and I want to just say that when you say shalom, that is a word that has so much power in it because it is a commanded blessing. So when I say shalom instead of hi, I'm saying everything connected to you. It's not only you. But everything, the wholeness, the word wholeness and completeness means everything that's connected to you, I bless you with prosperity. I bless you with tranquility. I bless you with good welfare and harmony in your home and everything connected to you. You can also use it as goodbye because when you say shalom, it says we're going to meet again. It's like a cyclical. It's not really goodbye. It's like shalom. Because the blessing of you, you are a blessing to me and I will see you again. And until then, shalom to you. Matthew 10, 1, uh, 13 says, if the household is worthy, let your shalom come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your shalom return to you. Do you know that every house that you go and you know, you talk, talk about that, shake the dust off your feet if someone doesn't receive you. This is really where in Matthew 10, 13, the Lord says this, if, you're, if a household is worthy, let your shalom, let your blessing, let all these things come upon it. But if it's not worthy, 
And I believe that uh, one of the greetings that we say on a Shabbat is Shabbat Shalom. And when we practice Shabbat in our home, it brings Shalom to it. Mark 5.34. Now I want to let you know that Yeshua, if you go back to the original Hebrew, when almost every time someone was healed, I'm, I'm going to go back and research this, how many times he said this, as he would heal someone, he would greet them this way. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well, go in shalom and be healed from all your disease. I want to tell you today, shalom to you, be healed, be whole. It, it, remember, he's not just saying peace, not peace to you, peace. He's saying peace and harmony wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. He's speaking this commanded blessing as he's healing people. In addition to them being healed, he wants them to have shalom. John 16, 33 says it this way, and I'm going to wind it up here. These things I've spoken to you so that in me, you may have shalom. In the world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And then in Mark 2, 27, then he said to them, Shabbat was made for man and not man for Shabbat. In other words, this was Yeshua talking. The Shabbat was not was made for us. We were not made for Shabbat. This is not something that we have to do. Shabbat was made for us. This is something we get to do. This is a privilege. It is an honor. So if you want to learn more about the community blessing of Shabbat, how to create a Shabbat in your home, how to light the candles, I mean, you don't have to do this. But when I tell you we've made a bad trade, we I grew up working in church on Sundays, working so hard. I mean, multiple, sometimes five and six services plus a prayer meeting. Let me tell you, Sunday was never a Sabbath for me in my whole life. It was one of the hardest working days as working in the ministry of all the week. It was never a Shabbat. It never felt like a Shabbat. It never felt like a Sabbath. So I would say, I'm just going to make Monday my Sabbath, right? Now I would say I'm making Monday my Sabbath. That was a good intention. Didn't always happen. And I tried to keep it. Uh, but if I would have only known that if I would have prepared for all my ministry until Friday night and from Friday night to Saturday night, I would have shut it down and said, I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm going to be still and I'm going, he's made an appointment to be with me and I'm going to keep my appointment to be with him. I can't even imagine how much better my life would have been, but now I can do it. I get to do it. I want to tell you that it is a way of peace. If you have anxiety and depression, I challenge you to make the day, the Friday night to Saturday night to keep a time where you're playing, turning off your cell phone, turning off your computer, unless that's something you do for fun, right? Um, that you that there's something fun or relaxing you do on there. But you, I just want to challenge you to set aside time to get out of the rat race and just try it. Try it for one week and get somebody, your family or people that you love around you and say, we're going to take 24 hours and we're just going to, talk about the Lord. We're going to sit down and have Bible study and prayer at dinner table on Friday night. And on Saturday, we're going to go out for a hike and we're going to sit down in the woods and talk about the Lord or just enjoy one another. We're going to do something that's really fun. And every week we're going to do a 24 hour vacation or staycation. And we are just going to enjoy God, the simple things of life, shut it all down. Maybe it's a day you turn off all the screens. I don't know. You pray about it and ask the Lord, if you're struggling with stress, if you're struggling with depression or anxiety, or you just want to get closer to the Lord and walk in his truth. Many people are being, are being wooed by the Holy spirit to discover these ancient beautiful from the time of creation things that god has in store for his people there is a move of god going that we are going back to the beginning back to the early church back to the foundation so i just want to encourage you to just try it just do it and i would love to hear your comments if you want to um, learn more about this uh, like this 
recording and subscribe for the next version or the next episode, which I want to talk about the blessing of Shabbat and how to celebrate Shabbat and borrow from some of the awesome Jewish traditions that I have learned that have been such a blessing to my life. Shabbat Shalom. If you're watching this on Shabbat, but otherwise Shalom to you, peace, wholeness, tranquility, harmony, blessings to you, completeness and wholeness to you and everyone that is connected to you. Shalom.